Now stay tuned and I'll have a look at this afternoon's starting pitchers in just one minute. Fans, Mark Cloutier is just one of the many, many behind-the-scenes people here at Jerry Park, behind the Expos organization. He heads up, as Dave pointed out, the Special Events Division. There are other aspects, of course, to this uh, Expo operation. And if you'd like to know all about them, well, you can find out the information in the Montreal Expos yearbook. The yearbook has all the information on how the Expo Baseball Club was formed in the first place. A lot of uh, dope on manager Gene Mock and his very able assistants, Peanut Fowry, Calvin McClish, and Jerry Zimmerman, and of course, in his entire ball club. So if you want the inside dope on the Montreal Expos, get it through a copy of their yearbook. The yearbook is on sale here at Jerry Park for a dollar, but uh, if you can't get to Jerry Park this year, but nevertheless would like a copy of the yearbook, send a dollar and a quarter to yearbook Jerry Park, Montreal. It will be a dollar and a quarter well spent. That's yearbook, Jerry Park, Montreal. Warming up at the St. Louis bullpen, their starting pitcher this afternoon, right-hander Nelson Bryles. Bryles is 6-5 and five for the year, and he is 0-1 against the Expos. Uh, beg pardon, he is 1-0. and 0. He defeated Jerry Robertson 3-0 at St. Louis. Bryles has had three complete games in a row. In his last start, he beat the Mets 5-3 on June 21st. He also added his first Major League home run, his first National League home run for the season in that ball game. Nelson Bryles, 6-5, and five, the starting pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. On the mound this afternoon for the Expos will be Howie Reed, a right-hander. Howie will be making his third start. He's worked in five games, two of them as a starter. This is his third. Howie is 2-1 and one with a 2.03 ERA. He's worked 17 and two-thirds innings. He, of course, came to us from the Houston Astros in settlement of the Rusty Staub deal. He went uh, was assigned to Vancouver, the Pacific Coast League, and then after got it, he got himself in excellent shape, very slow start this spring, how he had had an automobile accident in spring training, set him a couple of weeks behind, so the work that he got in the Pacific Coast League was invaluable to him. He's looked very sharp on the mound for the Expos, and manager Gene Mock feels that uh, the addition of Reed to the starting rotation is going to be a big plus here as the season goes along. So Howie Reed, right-hander, will be the pitcher for Montreal against the Cardinal right-hander Nelson Bryles. And now, stay tuned for Expos Baseball. Catch up with right now. The Expos have their eyes set on those fills, and the fills will be here for four games in three days. A single game tomorrow night, single game Saturday afternoon, and the doubleheader on Sunday. Now, there's still some good seats remaining for this weekend series, so contact the TRS office nearest you or get your tickets right here at Jerry Park for the Phillies series. And then the division-leading Chicago Cubs and Leo DeRocher will be here on Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the Chicago Cubs here at Jerry Park. So plan ahead, get your tickets in advance so you can get choice seats, and come on out and be with us here at Jerry Park for Expos Baseball. Right now, let's take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. Bob Oldest representing manager Gene Mock of the Expos and Red Shandings representing himself are handing in their lineups to the umpires at home played in the pregame conference. The umpires for tonight's ball game or this afternoon's game, Al Barlick behind the plate, Ed Vargo at first base, John Kibler at second, and Andy Olson at third base. Now here are the starting lineups, so if you've got a scorecard, here we go. For the St. Louis Cardinals, the leadoff man this afternoon will be center fielder Kurt Flood. Veda Pinson will be batting number two for the Cardinals today and playing in right field. Lou Brock has been dropped down the last couple of games to the third spot in the batting order. Brock will be playing in left field. The cleanup man, as usual, for St. Louis will be their big first baseman, Joe Torre. Tim McCarver, who has been murder with a capital M against the Expos in this series, and this year as a matter of fact, will be batting fifth. He's the catcher. Mike Shannon, the third baseman. Mike, with a home run in last night's ball game, bats six. He's at third base. Julian Javier at second base will be batting seventh for St. Louis, followed by Dal Maxwell, the shortstop. Maxwell, the lowest hitter in the regular St. Louis lineup, with a one Riles, the pitcher, will be batting ninth. For the Montreal Expos, the starting lineup looks like this. Gary Sutherland at second base leading off. 
Mac Jones has been moved from the cleanup spot to number two in the order. Big Mac playing left field. Rusty Staub will bat third this afternoon. Rusty is in right field. Center fielder Ron Fairley gets the cleanup assignment from manager Gene Moss. He's followed by Bob Bailey, the first baseman, batting fifth. Sixth in the order, Jose Coppola-Boy, the third baseman. Seventh man in the batting lineup, Ronnie Brand, the catcher. Number eight is the shortstop, Bobby Wine. And number nine in the order, the pitcher, Howie Reed. Reed with a record of two victories against one defeat while with the Expos, just uh, with the club for about a couple of weeks now after being called up from the Vancouver Mounties of the Pacific Coast League. Well, the Expos have taken to their defensive positions and just going over that defense for you, once again, it's Bob Bailey at first base, Gary Sutherland at second, Bobby Wine at short, and Coco Lavoy at third. In center field, Ron Fairley, flanked by Rusty Staub in right field, and the mayor of Jonesville, Mac Jones, out in left field. A fine crowd here, considering it's a late afternoon game here at Jerry Park. A working day in Montreal, and the crowd is still coming into Jerry Park. Now everyone rises for the playing of the national anthems of the United States and Canada. <laughs> are all in their white sleeveless shirts and blue pants of course that's Ed Vargo at first John Kibler at second and Andy Olson at third base if you have an opportunity to get to Jerry Park if you're within driving distance say 10, 15, 20 minutes then our advice is to come to Jerry Park and see most of this game this afternoon between the Expos and the Cardinals there are still plenty of seats available for this ball game this afternoon However, if you can't make it, make sure that you take in at least one, perhaps two, of the four-game series against the Philadelphia Phillies, which starts at uh, Jerry Park here tomorrow night at 8.05. The Phillies and the Expos will meet Saturday afternoon. Now, the Expos have been playing some Saturday night games, but this Saturday, they're playing in the afternoon. Game time is 2.15. And for the folks in Ottawa, make sure you flock to Montreal. Not too long a drive now from Ottawa with that uh, beautiful highway, especially on the Quebec side of the provincial border, down in Montreal. No reason in the world why you can't come down in droves to celebrate Ottawa and District Day here at Jerry Park in Montreal. Hope to see you all here from Bytown on the weekend. Come down on Saturday, celebrate Ottawa Day, and stay over and take in the doubleheader 
Sunday afternoon, and you'll still be back in plenty of time. Well, we're all set for the start of this afternoon's game. The leadoff man, Kurt Flood, is now stepping into the batter's box. Howie Reid is all set to face the St. Louis leadoff man. And all set to take the microphone now, Jay Van Horn. All right, thank you, Russ. Howie's first pitch, a curveball for a strike, and it pulled Flood. He backed out of there. 0-1 to Kurt Flood. Flood batting 280. 13 doubles, a triple, a home run, 24 RBIs. Let's one go. It's high, ball one. One ball and one strike. Flood, Pinson, and Brock. Beautiful afternoon for the ball game. Reed has the sign from Brand. Ronnie sets the target, the 1 1 pitch. A little high and outside, ball two. Two and one. Howie Reed. From Dallas, Texas. Lives in Corpus Christi, Texas. Here's the 2 1. Swing and a miss by Flood. Count evens, two balls, two strikes. Howie was signed back in 1958 as a free agent by the Dodgers. He was offered to the Mets, but was returned to the Dodgers after they had a look-see. The 2-2 swung on, and a little looper. Right field It's going to drop in for a base hit. Flood comes up with a cheapie in front of Staub in right. And he's on. Little half swing. The looping ball out into right field. That'll bring Beta Pinson to the plate. Beta Pinson is hitting 287. Has 56 hits this season. 11 of them are doubles, 3 triples, 4 home runs, and 29 RBIs. Left-hand hitter. Reed having to contend now with Flood, the runner at first. Howie goes to the stretch. Looks at Flood. The right-hander deals a curve. Swung on ground ball. Settled into wine. That's one. Back to first. That's two. and hits into the double play. Sutherland to wind to Bailey. Two down, nobody on. Here's Lou Brock. Dave, that was a sharply hit uh, ground ball, but a terrific double play pulled off by Gary Sutherland and Bobby Wine with such great precision. They are really starting to operate like champions at short and second. And it takes a while. The guys have got to play together. Curveball is swung on and fouled down to the left. Oh, boy. A fan reached up with one hand and made a fine stop. And if I'm not mistaken, the ball went in the soft drink. Well... You see it all at Jerry Park. Here's the 0-1 pitch inside to Brock. One ball, one strike. How about that triple play last night, Russ? A lot of people were talking about that. It's still unbelievable. Boy, this uh, Expo Ball Club has come up with a lot of firsts this year. Of course, that was a heartbreaking loss, that second game. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Just missed the outside corner. Two balls, one strike. Lou Brock, he makes things happen for the Cardinals. What a ball player he's been for this team. Swing and a foul, bounce to the right. Two balls, two strikes. Brock hitting 305. He's been at bat more times than any other Cardinal. He's played in more games. With the exception of one other player, Joe Torrey's played in 71 and 70 of the 71 games. Rock's played in 69 games. Here's a bouncing ball. Goes to Bailey. He flips to Reed. Covering. There's the put out. That's all for Lou Brock. And that's all for the Cardinals in the first. No runs. One hit. No errors. Nobody left. The score, St. Louis nothing. And our Montreal Expos coming to bat. Well, manager Gene Mark of the Montreal Expos was given a rather rough time by the fans here last night when Mark walked out and pulled uh, his starting pitcher, Mike Wagner, in the eighth inning. The fans... Uh, Gave him quite a booing, and of course, Gene responded uh, to a few of the fans back of the dugout, all jokingly, of course, but to some of the fans, of course, really wrote him uh, quite heavily. A lot of baseball fans here in Montreal do not realize, of course, that a pitcher needs four days rest, a starting pitcher. Mike Wagner started for the Expos on Sunday, 
So here he comes back with two days rest, pitches a terrific ball game for eight innings, but the manager of a ball club knows when his pitcher is tiring, and Gene Mark knew last night that Mike Wagner was a tired young man up on that hill in the eighth inning and decided to take no chances. So we brought in Dick Raddatz and later Elroy Faith. The move uh, may have backfired, it often does. But you know, like we always say, when things uh, go wrong for a ball club, you say, what happens? The only answer is, that's baseball. So here we go into the bottom half of the first inning. Let's see what the Expos can do in their first meeting with the right-hander, Nelson Browse. And for the Expos, it'll be Gary Sutherland, Mac Jones, and Rusty Staub. Big Mac has been moved up to the number two spot in the Expo batting order. The Expos need to win this afternoon to split this series with St. Louis. Montreal winning night before last. Cardinals took the double dip yesterday. Here's Gary Sutherland. Right hand hitter. Gary takes one low outside. Ball one. Sutherland batting 236. In the sixth inning at Chicago, it's the Pirates three, the Cubs three. That's Ellis against Selma. The next pitch, a strike to Gary. One ball, one strike. In the ninth inning at Shea Stadium, New York, Phillies two, Mets nothing. So those Phils have come on. Gary swings and lines one foul way back into the stands down to our left. Count as one ball, two strikes. Well, the big break for Nelson Bryles came in 1967 when Bob Gibson was injured. Bryles was given the opportunity to get in that starting rotation, and he's been in there ever since. He just missed being a 20-game winner last year. He won 19 and lost 11. Gary fouls one back to the screen. One ball, two strikes. Riles this year, six and five. He's worked 96 in the third innings, has five complete games. Cardinal staff have 28 complete games. Gibson has 13 of them. Sutherland gets a base hit out into left field. Over Maxville. First hit for the Expos, Gary Sutherland with a base hit. And here's Mac Jones batting in the number two spot. Staub will hit third. Ron Fairley moved to the cleanup spot against Riles this afternoon. Mac Jones hitting 281. Runner leads. The pitch is inside to Mac. Ball one. Mac has got nine doubles, two triples, 11 home runs, and 39 RBIs. Riles to the stretch. His pitch swung on a high pop. Left side foul. Back into the box seats about six or eight rows. We've still got some fans coming into the ballpark as we look out to the bleacher seat ticket windows behind the left field bleachers. Riles ready, the 1-1 one, one to Mac, inside. Two balls, one strike. The Expos as a team are hitting 234. Mac, up until this series, has been one of the leading hit- hitters against St. Louis, but his average against the Cardinals now has dropped to 343. Fairley's batting 435 against the Cards. Pitch is high, ball three, three and one to Mac Jones. Gary Sutherland, the runner at first with nobody out. Riles looking to McCarver. The right-hander's ready, looks at Sutherland. Here's the pitch to Mack. Low and outside. Ball four. There are two aboard. Mack Jones draws a walk. Gary moves down to second base, and the batter will be Rusty Staub. Rusty is batting 292. 63 hits this season. Ten doubles, two triples, nine home runs, 24 RBIs. I'll tell you, Dave, uh, 
I don't have to tell you. You know it, of course. And uh, most baseball fans know that uh, Rusty Staub certainly knows what that strike zone is. And he doesn't swing at bad pitches. And, of course, the pitchers don't want to give him anything too good. He has walked 43 times this year. Good man to have at the plate. Outfield around to the right for Rusty. He looks at a curve low and inside. Ball one. On deck is Ron Fairley. We're in the bottom of the first. No score. And the Expos have got runners at first and second. The wind is blowing out. Ought to help these hitters. Pretty good breeze. Riles ready. The pitch. Taken for a strike. Just above the knees. Riles nipped the outside corner. One and one. At St. Louis last week, Nelson Bryles beat the Expos three to nothing. Jerry Robertson was the losing pitcher in that ball game. Line drive out into left field, down the left field line. Gary Sutherland is coming in. Mac Jones will hold up at third base and stops in with a double. And the Expos lead one to nothing. Rusty stops the 11th double of the year. His 25th RBI. Still nobody out. Center fielder, number six. Number Here's Ron Fairley. Ron is batting 340. Since joining the Expos in 14 games, he is 17 for 50. Four doubles, a triple, two home runs, nine RBIs. Ron Fairley, left hand hitter. Timeout called for just a moment. Rusty Stop tying his shoe. All right, we're ready to go. A couple of hits off Bryles here along with that walk. And a run is in. Bryles deals. Barely takes it. Low and outside. Ball one. Ron Fairley, who for 10 complete seasons and part of the 11th, wore a Los Angeles Dodger uniform. Here's the pitch. Fairley swings the ball well hit to center field. Going back deep into left center is Flood. He makes the catch, and Mac Jones will score easily. Rusty Stop moves down to third. Boy, that ball was hit well by Fairley. Some 400 feet into the left center corner. It's 420 to straightaway center field. So Ron Fairley, who really tagged that ball, drives in a run. One away. Mac Jones crossing the plate. Stop moving to third for Bob Bailey, the batter. 2 nothing Expos. Bob, a right-hand hitter, batting 263. Looks like Ray Washburn warming up for the Cardinals in their bullpen. Right-hander, Ray Washburn. Bob is 4 for 21 at the plate against the Cardinals this year. The pitch to Bailey. A fastball down low, ball one. Yeah, that's the right-hander, Washburn. Bob leading from third base. The pitch. Bob takes this one. Low and outside, ball two. Two and nothing. On deck is Coco LaBoy. Barlick calling the balls and strikes. Veteran National League umpire. Here's the pitch. Down low. Ball three. Bryles behind on Bob Bailey. Three and all. Oh. Boy, he's kept that ball down, too. He has seen what happens when you get the ball up on Bob Bailey. Bob hit two home runs two nights ago here. I think Bob will get the green light. They're going to go ahead and put him on now with a 3-0 count. Get a man on first and de deal with Coco LaVoy. So Bob Bailey drew a walk. Second walk given up by Bryles. After he got behind 3-0, he went ahead and gave Bob the free ticket. Here's Coco LaVoy, right-hand hitter. Coco batting 252. First month of the season, he was the club's leading hitter. And 
what an exciting third baseman. Runners at first and third with one out. The boy takes one wide, ball one. Expos leading 2 nothing here in the bottom of the first. Final game of the Cardinal series. Phillies in here tomorrow. They're playing at Chase Stadium this afternoon. Flood is not too deep. Few steps around in left center. Brock deep in left field. For LaBoy. Here's the pitch. A strike nips the outside corner. About knee high. One and one to Coco. Mike Shannon playing just a couple of steps behind the bag, protecting the line. Maxville and Javier at double play depth. Torrey, the first baseman, holding the runner. Here's the pitch. The boy swings and misses. Strike two, one ball, two strikes. He went after the same pitch that Bryles just made for a called strike. Washburn continues to warm up in the St. Louis bullpen. The stretch by Bryles. Here's the pitch. Way outside. And high. Ball two. Two and two. Had a little over 30,000 here at Jerry Park last night. Over 418,000 fans have watched big league baseball here at Jerry Park so far this season. Runners lead. The 2-2 to LeBoy. LeBoy swings and hits this one high in the air. Foul territory near the Cardinal dugout. Torrey over there makes the catch. And the runners hold. So LeBoy fouls out to Joe Torrey. Two away. And the batter will be the catcher, Ronnie Brand. He's getting rid of the shin guards down in the on-deck circle now. The the catcher. Coming to the point. Number 11, Ron. Ronnie Brand is hitting 222. Played in 30 games now, 14 for 63 at the plate. He's hit three doubles, has driven in five. Was with Houston. Picked up in the draft, along with John Bateman, who was also Houston catcher. John, of course, was the Astros' number one catcher. First pitch is swung on and popped up. Foul territory to the left. McIver coming back, but this is about five rows back, and he can't get it. I'll tell you, Dave, if he had our net, he would have got it. Just about, all oh, seven feet beyond the railing. And our net is about seven feet long. Oh, and one. The count on Ron Brand. Speaking of John Bateman, he comes off the disabled list. In uh, seven days, if I'm not mistaken. Stop. The runner at third. At first, Bob Bailey. Two outs. Expos leading 2 nothing here in the first. The pitch to Ronnie swung on, and this one is bounced foul behind third base. Strike two. If Ron Brand gets on, Bobby Wine will be the batter. Trial started 14 games, had an ERA as a starter of 1.89 last year. Here's the pitch, and it's bounced to the right side of the infield. Up with it is Javier, the throw to first base in time to get Ronnie Brand, and the Expos are through here in the first. But there are two runs on two hits. No errors in the field, and two were left on base. And the score at the end of one, the Expos two, the Cardinals nothing. On the out-of-town scoreboard in the National League this afternoon, the Phillies and the Mets are at Chase Stadium in New York. The Phillies scored a run in the sixth, another in the eighth, and lead the Mets two to nothing going into the bottom half of the ninth inning. We should have a final score in that ball game any moment now. Pittsburgh is at Chicago. It's three all at Wrigley Field, top half of the eighth inning. Four home runs in that ball game so far by Williams and Rudolph of the Cubs and by Stargell and San Guillen of the Pittsburgh Pirates. In other ball games, Los Angeles plays at Atlanta, San Diego at Cincinnati, San Francisco at Houston. In the American League, 
Latest score we have from Fenway Park is a three-all tie between the Cleveland Indians and Boston Red Sox in the top half of the tenth inning. Minnesota and California are scoreless, now playing in the bottom of the first, Anaheim, California. Kansas City is at Oakland, Chicago at Seattle, New York at Detroit, those games later on. Here at Jerry Park in Montreal, the Expos lead the St. Louis Cardinals 2 to nothing with two runs in the bottom half of the first inning. Now we go to the top of the second, and the first man up for St. Louis will be first baseman Joe Torre, the Cardinals' cleanup man. Joe Torre, the club leader in the home run and RBI department. Right-hand hitter. Torre looks at the first pitch from Howie Reed. Ball one. Torrey is batting 284, 74 hits. He has 13 doubles, 4 triples, 10 home runs, and 42 RBIs. The pitch to Torrey. Swung on, line drive, left field, going back. Mac Jones on the track. He's got it. One away. That'll bring the catcher, Tim McCarver, to the plate. McCarver's batting 283. He has 67 hits this season. Nine of them are doubles, two triples, five home runs, and 31 RBIs. Tim McCarver. Expos have hit 57 home runs this year. The Cardinals have hit 44 home runs. As we mentioned, 10 of them belong to Joe Torrey. The pitch to McCarver. Low inside, ball one. McIver, a left-hand hitter. On deck is Mike Shannon. He's still selecting a bat. He has not come to the on-deck circle yet. One out, none on. Reed deals. Slip pitch is a little high. Ball two. Two balls, no strike. Reed uses the slip pitch for his changeup. Here's the 2 nothing. Swung on and foul to the left side. Two balls, one strike. There's another read in the big leagues that has quite a slip pitch that he's used very successfully. That is Ron Reed of the Atlanta Braves. Here comes the 2-1. Taken high. Ball three. Three and one to McCarver. A couple of years ago when Ron Reed was coming up through the Atlanta farm system, Paul Richards worked with him and helped him develop that slip pitch. A lot of men have picked it up. Pitch is high and outside. Ball four. McCarver is on with a walk with one out in the second. We'll take ten seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. This is W... A division of Regal Broadcasting. This is WHRL 103.1 on your FM dial, Albany, New York. Here's Mike Shannon, right-hand hitter, batting 247. Reed deals. Shannon swings, fouls it off to the left. Strike one. Shannon's hit eight doubles, five home runs, 25 RBIs. Hit one here last night in the second game of the twin bill. Three-run homer in the ninth. Serving the golden triangle of Albany, Schenectady. Working to bring his average up. The pitch is swung on and a bounder goes to the left. Wine goes to second for one, back to first. It is not in time. The, ball, the throw was a little low and scooted away from Bob Bailey, although he stopped it to keep Shannon at first. Two down. Shannon takes over as the runner at first base on the fielder's choice. Wine to Sutherland gets rid of McCarver. The batter will be Julian Javier. Javier batting 269. Two outs. Expos leading 2 0. We're in the top of the second. And Howie Reed is on the mound. He goes to the stretch. Looks at Shannon, the pitch to Javier, swung on, a high hopper, foul to the left. 0-1. Oh Howie Reed had 
two fine back-to-back seasons in the Pacific Coast League. He pitched effectively for the Astros at the end of the 67 season. The Astros thought this year they might use him as a starter or middle or short reliever. And then, of course, he was dealt to the Expos in all of the dealings, the stop case. Howie looking for a sign from Brad. He's got it now. Holds at the belt, checks his runner, and deals. It's down low. Ball one. One ball, one strike to Julian Javier. A lot of baseball players play a lot of golf. Reed is a golfer, but his other hobby, and one that he's really excited about, is skin diving. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Javier. Swung on, line drive, single out into left center. Tearing around second is Shannon. He's going to go to third. The throw is to second base, and there are runners at first and third. Second hit off Reed. Javier delivering a single, sending Shannon around to third base, and the batter will be Dal Maxville with two outs here in the top of the second. Maxville is hitting 179. Among his 34 hits this year are seven doubles, one triple, one home run. He's driven in 13. Val Maxville. Read to the stretch. Deals. Curves a little high inside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes to Dal. On deck is the pitcher, Nelson Bryles. He'll come to the plate if Maxville gets on. There are two down. Teams are even in the hit department now with two each, but the Expos lead two to nothing. Here's Reed's pitch. Swing and a miss. A strike. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. Maxville has had his problems at the plate this year, but as we've mentioned before, Maxville has never been a high average hitter. He checked his swing, and a strike is called. Curve across the letters. One ball, two strikes. The last four seasons with St. Louis, Maxville's hit 135, 244, 227, and 253. Lifetime major league average of 232. Maxville hitting 179 right now with the Redbirds. Here's the one-two. It's high. Throw to second as Javier goes, and he's in there safely. And Maxville almost went after that pitch, but it was up high. He let it go, and Javier comes up with a stolen base. So now runners are at second and third. For Javier, his fifth theft of the year. He's been caught three times and has made it successfully five times now. A 2-2 to Maxville. Swung on, line drive down the right field line. This is going to score a couple of runs. Staub up with the ball. He turns and fires to second, but holding up at first is Maxville, and the ball game is tied up at 2-2. Two two. Shannon and Javier scoring. Numbers 14 and 15 in the RBI department for Maxville. Second hit of the inning, third hit for the Redbirds. This one producing a couple of runs to tie it up at 2-2 here in the top of the second. And the pitcher, Nelson Bryles, is the batter. Reed deals inside, ball one. Maxville, the runner at first. How he gets himself ready. The pitch is swung on and missed. A ball and a strike to Bryles. On the 21st, Bryles beat the Mets 5-3, to three, and in that game, he did hit his first major league home run. The 1-1 is swung on, lazy fly ball right field, stopped coasting over to his right, has it, and that's all for the Redbirds in the second. Bryles is out. The Cardinals came up with two runs on two hits. 
No errors in the field. And one man was left on base. And now, the end of one and a half, the Expos two, the Cardinals two. Well, fast as I check the National League standings, the Eastern Division, see that the Chicago Cubs are still in first place. Five and a half games ahead of the New York Mets. Both the Cubs and the Mets are in action in separate, separate ball games this afternoon. And we'll be bringing you up to date on those scores a little later on. But the Cubs uh, will be in Montreal following the visit of the Philadelphia Phillies. The Cubs will be coming here next Monday for a four-game series against our Expos. And fans, I know a lot of baseball people are saying the Chicago Cubs will represent the Eastern Division in the National League playoff for the right to enter the World Series. And a lot of people will pick the Cubs to win it all this year and go into the annual Fall Classic against the best in the American League. My point in mentioning this is this. With so many outstanding players, fellows like Ferguson Jenkins, the fabulous Ernie Banks, and Ron Santo and Don Kessinger, You'll want to see the Cubs in action against the Expos starting next Monday at Jerry Park. Number seven, Bobby Wine. The bottom of the second and Bobby Wine, Howie Reed, Gary Sutherland for the Expos. A 2-2 ball game. Nelson Bryles. Bryles had that shutout Although he gave up ten hits to the Expos that night in St. Louis. A strike to Bobby. 0-1. But Bryles was the winner. 3-0 on the 16th in St. Louis. Bryles with the 0-1. It swung on and fouled high into the air. Back to the right. Up onto the press box roof. 0-2. Well, tomorrow in the first game, tomorrow night first game of the Phillies series, we'll have our first opportunity to see the young right-hander, 24-year-old Steve Renko, who was just called up from AAA ball. Trials next offering to wine is low and outside. Ball one, one ball, two strikes. The probable starter for the Phillies will be Woody Fryman. 8.05 starting time tomorrow. Next pitch, low outside, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Bill Stoneman will pitch on Saturday against the Phillies. Jerry Robertson and Mike Wagoner are slated to pitch the doubleheader on Sunday. Here's the 2-2. Wine swings a ground ball to Torrey. He bobbles it, but he recovered in time. He'll make the play unassisted on Bobby Wine. One away. Here's the pitcher, Howie Reed. Number 29, always Reed. Reed in three games has had four at-bats for the Expos, looking for his first hit of the season. Howie, of course, joined the ball club while we were on the road. Howie came with us when we left Vancouver the night of June 5th. Here's the pitch. Reed swings, line drive, left field. Going back is Brock onto the track. He can't get it. It's out of here. A line drive home run for Howie Reed. Right over the 368-foot side, a line drive home run. And Howie Reed, in his first at-bat at Jerry Park in Montreal, hits a home run to put the Expos out in front 3-2. to two. It's also his first hit of the season in the big league. Boy, what a way to introduce yourself to the home crowd. A line shot over the left center field fence, 368 feet away. It never got great height, but it was a line drive right over Lou Brock's head into the seat. One out. Top of the order, Gary Sutherland. First pitch is low for a ball. Dave, ball, the, no strike. The Phillies beat the Mets 2 to nothing. That score just flashed in. That was the third hit off Bryles. Pitch is down low, ball two. Bryles has now given up nine home runs this year. Expos leading 3-2 as Gary Sutherland looks at a strike. The count is 2-1. and one. We're in the bottom of the second. Mac Jones on deck. Strike two called on Gary. 
two balls, two strikes. And he has stepped out for just a moment. Having a little talk with plate umpire Al Barlick. Ed Bargo's at first, John Kibler at second, Andy Olson at third. Final just in. Boston beat Cleveland 4-3. Romo the winner, Burchart the loser. Pitch is cut on and a hard bouncer goes to the shortstop Maxville. The throw to Torrey is in time. Two away. Mac Jones will come to the plate. He walked in the first inning. Mac is hitting 281. Brock is in left. He's deep. Flood around in left center. Vincent deep pulled around toward right center. Two down, not on. A strike to Mac Jones, 0-1. Left-hand hitter. Nelson Bryles winds it up. His pitch to Mac is down low. One ball, one strike. Roberto Clemente hit a home run for the Pirates in the eighth with one on his tenth of the year. Pittsburgh 5, Chicago 3. They're in the 8th inning at Wrigley Field. One ball, one strike to Mac. Let this one go high. Ball 2. 2-1. Two and one. If Mac gets on, Rusty Staub will be the batter. Rusty's on deck. 3-2 Expos here in the bottom of the 2nd. Ryle deals, pitch is cut on, and hit high in the air. Shallow center field, heavy air, second baseman is back there dancing under it. He has it. Heavy air had a little trouble with the sun and the wind, but he pulled it down. The Expos are through in the second, but one run on one hit. Howie Reed's home run to left. No errors, none left. The score at the end of two, Expos three, Cardinals two. Well, in case you just joined us, we'll review the scoring in this ball game. The Expos took a 2 to nothing lead in the bottom half of the first inning, and they did it this way. Gary Sutherland led off with a hard single to left field. He was followed by Mac Jones, who walked. With runners in first and second, Rusty Staub hit a double down the left field line, and that scored Gary Sutherland with the first run. Then Ron Fairley hit a sacrifice fly to deep center field, almost to the center field fence. 420 feet away, perhaps about 15 feet shy of it, and that brought in Mac Jones with the second run. St. Louis came back with two runs in their half of the uh, second inning, and uh, they did it this way. McCarver walked with one out, Shannon hit it to a fielder's choice, Javier singled, and Maxwell knocked in two runs with a single into right field. Then the Expos grabbed a 3-2 to two lead in the bottom half of the second inning when pitcher Howie Reed in his first appearance as an Expo at the plate, lined the shot over into Jonesville. So that home run by Howie Reed has given the Expos a 3-2 to two lead as we go into the top half of the third inning. First man up for St. Louis will be center fielder Kurt Flood. Here again, Dave Van Horn. Kurt Flood got a looping single to right in the first inning. Top of the cardinal order. Expos leading 3-2. Howie Reed's wind up. His pitch bunted by Flood. First base side. Brand up with the ball. Throw to first. It got the runner. He's out. That is all for Flood. Ron Brand with a fine play on that ball. One away. Flood trying to punt to get on. Beta defense in the batter. Hit into a double play in the first. A snappy double play. Sutherland to wind to Bailey after Flood had gotten on. Tell you, when you've got guys like Pinson and Flood running, you've got to come up with quick double plays. Here's the slip pitch low inside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. We call that the slip pitch. As I said, it is Howie Reed's change of pace. It's his slow pitch. Here's the windup. Curve is fouled at the plate. One ball, one strike. Howie has got enough in his repertoire to keep hitters off balance. He's got a good fastball, a slider, a curve, and that slip pitch. He does not use a knuckleball or a screwball. 
pitch is high. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. The slip pitch is very hard to time for the batter because Reed gives it a big wind-up and a lot of motion. Looks like he's going to throw the fastball. Then that ball just floats into you. Next offering is a little high. He's gotten behind now on Vinson, three and one. So Howie's going to have to bear down. Been trying to go with a lot of junk on some of these guys. Pinson's one of them. The three-one pitch. Missed the outside corner. Just missed. Ball four. So Pinson is on with one out. That'll bring Lou Brock to the plate. Brock grounded out to Bailey in the first Brock. inning. The Expos are leading three to two. We're in the top of the third. Brock came into the game batting 305. Left hand hitter. Penson at first. He takes his lead. The stretch by Reed. The pitch taken high and outside. Ball one. Penson has not run a great deal this year. He's stolen one base, he's been caught once. Of course, the guy that's doing all the running is Brock, who's stolen 29 bases. Here's the 1-0. Brock swings and misses. One ball, one strike. When on base this year, Brock has only been caught four times, twice, by Expos catchers. Once by Ron Brand, once by John Bacabella. One ball, one strike with one out. Infield at double play depth. The pitch to Brock. Low and outside. Ball two. Two and one. The outfield just a few steps around to the right for Block. Stop is pretty much straight away at right. Fairly. A couple of steps to right center. The pitch to Brock. Taking high ball three. And now he's behind on Lou, 3-1. and one. How he got behind on Pinson, 3-1, lost him. Coco LeBoy, third baseman, came over to talk to Howie for just a moment. The wind blowing out here this afternoon. The sky's just a little hazy, but a lot of sun shining on the field. Reed holds below the buckle. The 3-1 is cut on and hit high in the air, foul territory, down to the left, and it fell just in front of the box seat section. LeBoy and Wine gave chase but could not get to it. We're going to get some activity now in the Expos bullpen. John Bacabella going down there to warm up left-hander Dan McGinn. Dave, Ron Sato has just hit a two-run homer for Chicago in the eighth inning, so that ties that Chicago-Pittsburgh score up at 5 all. Boy, Santos had a couple of big hits the last couple of days for Chicago. A full count to Lou Brock, three and two. Pinson takes his lead, a throw to first. He's back in time. Torrey on deck. Again, a throw to first base. Pinson moving back safely. Now he gets set. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and a sharp ball grabbed by Sutherland, but he cannot make a play. A great diving stop by Gary. But he was down on the ground and could not make a play on Pinson, nor did he have a chance to get Brock at first. He gets a nice hand. He made a quick dive to his right to stop that ball hit hard by Brock. It's a hit for Brock. Moving Pinson to second with one out. Runners at first and second. And the batter, Joe Torrey, up for the second time. He lined out to Mac Jones in left field in the second inning. Expos leading 3-2. Cardinals have got the tying run in scoring position. And Brock at first. The pitch. Torrey swings and misses. Strike one. 
Vincent at second and Brock at first. Where you get any of these top three men on base in the Cardinal order and you've got some speed to contend with. Outfield around to the left for Torrey. The 0-1 pitch. Swung on. Hard hit ball. Left field. It is going. It's gone. A home run for Joe Torrey. So Howie Reed, who just put himself out in front of this ball game, gives up a home run to Torrey, a three-run homer here in the top of the third. And the Cardinals take a 5-3 to three lead on Torrey's home run. For Joe Torrey, his 11th home run of the year, RBIs number 43, 44, and 45. And Gene Mock is going out to the mound to talk to Howie Reed. Dan McGinn, left-hander, has been warming up in the bullpen and looks like that is going to be it for Howie Reed. Reed was in trouble in the last inning and the Cardinals scored a couple of runs on him and then could only get one man out here in the third. Walked Benson, gave up the hit to Brock. Now the home run to Torrey to clear the bases and we're going to get the left-hander, Dan McGinn. First man he'll face will be Tim McCarver. Well, Dave, uh... Kansas City is playing at Oakland, so I guess we should bring in a bulletin in our what else is new department. What do you think happened? Well, it's, if it's Oakland, it's got to involve uh, Mr. Jackson. It certainly does. He hit his 28th home run of the season. With one made aboard for Oakland, they lead Kansas City 2 to nothing in the first inning. Now pitching for the Well... Howie Reed got into just loads of trouble here in the third inning. Too bad because Howie seemed to be uh, going along quite well. But uh, here's what happened. Kurt Flood led off. Uh, Flood got in the way of Ronnie Brand's throw to first base. He was out of there. But Veda Pinson walked. Lou Brock followed with a single off Gary Sutherland's glove. A fine stop by Sutherland at second base. And Joe Torre followed by really plastering the ball. There was no question the moment it left Torre's bat, it was out of this ballpark. For Joe Torrey, his 11th home run of the year, and it upped his runs batted in total to 45 for the season. So now Dan McGinn comes into the ball game. McGinn, the left-hander, to a pitch to another very That's dangerous right. batter for St. Louis, catcher Tim, Tim McCarver. McCarver's had a home run in this series. He's been murder against Expo pitching. Left-hand hitter who walked in the second. Takes one low from Danny, ball one. Howie's record complete with that home run by Torrey. 5-3 Cardinals, top of the third. Dan McGinn, his 30th appearance of the year. 29th in relief. A swinging foul tip at the plate, rolling off to the right side over near the Cardinal on deck circle. One ball, one strike. One out here in the third. Expo scored two runs in the first. Cards tied it up in the top of the second. Reed's home run put Montreal out in front 3-2. And now the three-run homer by Torrey. Ground ball to Wine. Over to Bailey. McCarver's retired. Two away. And in steps Mike Shannon, who got on the fielder's choice in the second inning. Moved around to third base on a base hit by Javier and scored along with Javier when Maxville singled to right. Right-hand hitter. Swinging foul back out of play into the stands. Strike one. Well, next Wednesday, July 2nd, has been designated as Alouette's Night here at Jerry Park. And prior to the Cubs Expos game at 8.05 that evening, here's McGinn's next pitch. Low and inside, ball one, one and one to Shannon. Jay Dalton's Alouettes will take on the Expos radio, TV, and press in an exhibition game. Russ, I hope you're in shape. The one one. It's low, ball two, two and one to Shannon. Well, I'm in my greatest shape ever. 220 pounds and all blubber. And that's the best shape you've ever been in? Well, the best shape I've been in in 20 years. I'll be a Lou Brock on the base pass. Just watch me. 
Here's the two one. It's high and outside. Ball three. And Dan McGinn has gotten behind three and one now on Mike Shannon with two outs here in the third. That should be a lot of fun. But I'll have the old fishing net, and I'm going to play first base. Pitch is low, ball four. McGinn gives up a walk. The batter will be Holy and Javier. Shannon's the third cardinal to walk this afternoon. Reed had walked McCarver and Vincent. Javier is one for one. Got a base hit in the second, stole second, and scored on Maxville's single. Shannon, the runner at first base. McGinn looks to Bryant for the side. A long look. He's finally got the one he wants. Goes to the stretch. Check Shannon at first. The pitch is swung on a high bounder. Wine going behind second. Has it. He steps on the bag to get the force on Shannon coming in. Bobby Wine making the play by himself. Javier stranded on the fielder's choice. The Cardinals, three runs, two hits. A big shot, a three-run homer by Joe Torrey. No errors in the field. One man was left on base. And the score at the end of two and a half here at Jerry Park, St. Louis five, Montreal three. Some final scores in now, a National League activity this afternoon. Well, we have one final score. Philadelphia defeated the Mets two to nothing. Jackson the winner, Cardwell the loser in that ball game. That certainly helped the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs are tied right now with the Pirates, uh, five all playing in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Roberto Clemente hit a two-run homer in the top of the eighth to give Pittsburgh a five to three lead, but Ron Santo fell the one out of the park with one made aboard in the bottom half of the eighth inning to tie it up at five all. And I guess those wild Chicago fans went absolutely crazy when their favorite third baseman hit that home run. That's all we've got to report in the National League. Over in the American League, a final score. The Red Sox beat Cleveland 4-3. to three. Romo the winner, Burchard the loser. Romo's o- uh, Burchard's 0-1. Romo is now 3-4. and four. It's one all between Minnesota and Can- uh, California in the fourth inning. And 2-1 to one Oakland over Kansas City in the second. We go to the bottom half of the third inning here at Jerry Park in Montreal. <laughs> With the Cardinals out in front by two runs. So the Expos have some more catching up to do. First, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. When news happens, you'll hear the complete story first on 103.1 WHRL Albany, New York. Rusty Staub, Ron Fairley, and Bob Bailey will try to get something going here in the bottom of the third against Nelson Bryles. The Cardinals leading 5-3 to three on Joe Torre's three-run homer. Outfield around to the right for Rusty, who is one for one. He doubled. Back in the first inning. Takes the first one, ball one. Staub, Fairley, and Howie Reed have the RBIs for the Expos. Here's a strike call. One ball, one strike to Rusty. Vincent is deep in right field. Torrey, first baseman, playing behind the bag and protecting the line. Bryles delivers and hits the outside corner. Strike called. One ball, two strikes to Rusty Stop. That is a very tough pitch to hit. That pitch low on the outside corner. That's the pitcher's part of the plate. And he earns the strike when he puts it there because that is not a pitch that hitters really want. Pitch is down low. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Stop waiting. Here's Bryles' delivery on the 2-2. Swung on. This one hit straight away center field. Getting under it is Flood, and he's got it. One away. The batter will be Ron Fairley, who hit a sacrifice fly to score Mac Jones from third base back in the first inning. Ron Fairley is a left-hand hitter. Started the game. And is still batting 340. 
Bailey on deck with one out. The pitch to Fairley inside. Ball one. A ball and no strikes. The wind has shifted a little bit now and is blowing out to right field. Riles delivers and Fairley rips one foul down into the stands down to our left. And uh, that might have hurt someone, shaken somebody up for just a moment. The ball hit very hard. Line drive foul behind the exposed dugout. And John's ambulance man is going down to attend to the fan who was hit by that line drive by Ron Fairley just back of the expo dugout. Hard to see how seriously injured the fan is. Well, we hope not seriously, naturally. One ball, one strike to Ron Fairley. Riles wind up. The curveball is swung on and missed. Strike two. One ball and two strikes. Bailey on deck with one out. Riles deals inside. Backs Ron out of there. Count is even now at two and two. Tomorrow's starting time for that first Philadelphia game of the weekend will be 8.05 tomorrow night. Line drive down the left field line. This has extra base written all over it. Fairly is around first, headed to second, and he'll pull up with a stand-up double. Ron Fairley with a double down the left field line. Fourth hit off Bryles, and Bob Bailey will step up. With one out and fairly in scoring position, the Cardinals leading 5-3 to three here in the bottom of the third. LeBoy will follow. Bob Bailey walked in the first inning. He's batting 263. And now McCarver wants to go out to talk to Bryles. So timeout has been called here for just a moment. And we've got the mound conference. Turn on LaPierre. The organist, as McCarver goes out for a little chat on the mound with Nelson Bryles, plays, what is it? Let me call you, sweetheart. And that, of course, should uh, cheer up uh, Mrs. Bryles and McCarver. Well, we've said it before, and we'll say it again right here. We've got the best organist in Major League Baseball. You know, it's funny. Every team that comes in here, they all want to take Ramon back to their ballpark with them when they leave. It's really a show in addition to the baseball game here, Ramon. The first pitch to Bob Bailey is low and outside, ball one. Did I say Ramon? I meant Fernand Lapierre. Do I pronounce his name correctly, Russ, now that I say it right? Parfait. Fernand Lapierre. Lapierre. Whoa. Bailey has just hit one out of the park. There it goes, no doubt about it, from the minute he swung. A home run for Bob Bailey to tie the ball game up at 5-5. Five to five. Ron Bailey scores ahead of him. Boy, has Beatles got a hot bat. Oh, brother. That ball hit straight away left center. Brock didn't even move. That ball was in the stands before Bryles knew what happened. I'll tell you, it went up a good, uh, oh, I'd say almost halfway up the seat, back of the 368 mark. What a tremendous belt by Bob Bailey. Coco LeBoy takes a strike. Brother, Bailey's fifth home run. 19 RBIs now for Bob, and he has really got that swing down. As Gene Mark said, he's swinging at his pitch. One and one the count to LeBoy. Five home runs since Sunday. Ground ball foul behind third. One ball, two strikes. Bob hit two in the first game against Chicago Sunday afternoon. Two here last night. Right before. Thank you, Russ. Coco swings a hard hit ball left center. Flood going back on the track. He can't get it. It's out of here. A home run for Coco LeBoy. Again, back to back home run. The 
Expos lead six to five on home runs by Bob Bailey and Coco LeBoy. What an act. Here's Ronnie Brand, 0 for 1. Boy, the Expos, uh, Ruth and Gehrig routine, Bob Bailey and Coco LeBoy. Brand takes a strike. Fairley and Staub hit back-to-back -back home runs last night. And Bailey and LeBoy have now hit back-to-back -back home runs twice in this series against St. Louis. Brand swings, ground ball, deep in the hole. Maxville up with it, long throw. It's not in time, and Brand is on. Well, Ronnie Brand is on with a base hit. They've given Ronnie a hit. There was a long throw for Joe Maxwell at shortstop. Fired it over to Ronnie, uh, to first baseman Joe Torre. But Brand, a real speedball on the base pass, got there just in time. So Ronnie's on with his first hit of the afternoon. Four hits in the inning now off Bryles. Total of seven for the game. Here's the pitch to Bobby Wine. Low ball one. Ray Washburn, right-hander. Ron Willis, right-hander in the Cardinal bullpen. Ron Brand, the runner at first. One out here in the bottom of the third. The pitch. Taken low. Ball two to Bobby. Through all this excitement, Dave, the Expos now have a 6-5 to five lead in the bottom half of the third inning. Wine grounded out in the second to Torrey. Here's the pitch to Bobby. Swung on slow roller. Left side of the mound. Trouble for Bryles. He's up with it. Throw to first is in time to get Wine, but Brad moves down to second. Bryles had to really hurry. The batter will be the pitcher, Dan McGinn. Up for the first time. The fans still buzzing about the explosion here in the third. With one out, fairly doubled. Bob Bailey hit a two-run home run. Coco LeBoy followed with a home run. Second time in this series that they've hit back-to-back -back home runs. Bailey and LeBoy hit back-to-back -back home runs night before last. Fairly and Staub last night. Here's the pitch. On the outside corner to Dan, strike one called. Dan bats as he throws, left-handed. The pitch. Swing and a foul behind first, going into the Cardinal dugout. So the Expos now have 60 home runs for the season. Eight of them in this series. And the guy at home played is the guy who got number one, Dan McGinn. Oh, and two the count on Dan. Brian leading from second. We've out hit the Cardinals now, seven to five. Here's the pitch. McGinn tried to hold up on a swing, but he went around. That's all for Dan. Riles gets a strikeout, but in the inning, three runs, four hits, no errors, one left. A two-run homer by Bailey, a solo shot by Coco LeBoy, and as we go to the fourth, the score, Montreal six, St. Louis five. That Pittsburgh-Chicago game is now in the top half of the ninth inning, all tied up at five all, so that's quite a battle going on between the Pirates and the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs would love dearly to win this one because the Mets were shut out by the Phillies. 
two to nothing in an earlier ball game. Going into this afternoon's action in the National League East Division, the Cubs held a five and a half game lead. So right now they lead by six games with that Met loss. And if they uh, beat the Pirates in this ball game, staging one of their great ninth inning rallies, then they'll be six and a half games in front of the New York Mets. That's the story in the National League. That final score in the American League, 4-3 for the Red Sox over Cleveland. Minnesota and California are now 1-all in the bottom half of the fifth inning at Anaheim. Oakland leads Kansas City 2-1, bottom half of the third inning. Reggie Jackson hit his 28th home run of the season with one aboard to give Oakland their 2-1 lead. Kansas City had scored a run in the top half of the first inning. Very cool. The shortstop, down. Maxville. Dal Maxville will be the leadoff batter. The line score, Expos, six runs, seven hits, no errors. Cardinals, five runs, five hits, no errors. And here's Russ. All right, Dave, Dal Maxville, the first man up for the St. Louis Cardinals, top half of the fourth, and he takes the first pitch inside for ball one from Dan McGinn on the hill for the Montreal Expos. McGinn in relief of Howie Reed. A slow bouncer down at Coco Boy Shouldn't have any trouble with it. Fires it over to first base. And Maxwell is out of there, 5-3, to three, LeBoy to first baseman Bob Bailey. Boy, that Bob Bailey really has tremendous power, has found his power. We've always known that Bob has had power. We've been saying for a long time, one of these days when Bob Bailey finds the groove, they're not going to find the baseball. And he's lost five of them in the last few days. What a blast that Clout by Bailey in the third inning went halfway up the bleacher seats in left center field. The first pitch is inside for strike one. Bobby Johnson, Bobby Johnson batting for Nelson Brown. Hits a slow roller foul behind home plate. The count is 0-2. So that will be all for Johnson, and in all likelihood, we'll see Ray Washburn still warming up for St. Louis in their bullpen. Johnson, the right-hand batter. The one-and-one pitch is taken for strike two. Housefield not playing Johnson terribly deep. Johnson, the right-hand batter, has stopped in, uh, in sort of short right field. Not quite short right field, but not too deep. Fairley's moved over toward left center. Pitch is high, the count is two and two. Mac Jones is now moving back just a couple of steps in left field. Fine afternoon for baseball here at Jerry Park. Cards and the Expos closing out their four-game series. McGinn pumps, delivers, it's hit on the ground down to Bobby Wine at short. Wine over to Bailey, and pinch hitter Bobby Johnson is out of there. Brings us to the top of the batting order. Kurt Slott. We're in the top half of the fourth inning. The Expos are leading this ball game six to five. Showing tremendous power. Three home runs by the Expos. Starting pitcher Howie Reed. Line one into the left field seat. So did Bob Bailey and followed by Coco LaBoy. First pitch to flood is high and outside for ball one. Flood had a single, a looping single, just behind first base, down the right field line in the first inning, first man up, but he was erased on a fine double play, Sutherland to wind to Bailey. On the ground, out into center field for a base hit, just beyond the reach of pitcher Dan McGinn. Flood took a wide turn at first base, but returned to the bag. So Kurt Flood gets the first hit off Dan McGinn, a single to center field. Boy, if McGinn had been just maybe a foot more to his right, he would have had that sharply hit ground ball. Pence in the batter. He bounced into that double play in the first inning and walked in the third. The first pitch to Pinson is hit on the ground down to Sutherland. Point stop by Gary flips the wind for the fourth. Oh, a great play by Gary Sutherland at second base. And that's it for the Cardinals. No runs on one hit, no Expo errors, one man left on. We go to the bottom of the fourth with the Expo still leading, six to five. 
take a look at the scoreboard now. The Philadelphia-New York game over. Phillies beat the Mets 2-0. Four-hitter by the winner, Grant Jackson. Don Cardwell was the losing pitcher. Jackson now 8-6 and six on the year. Cardwell is 2-8. and eight. The Phillies, two runs, eight hits, no errors. The Mets, no runs, four hits, no errors. Phillies beat the Mets 2-0 to today at Shea. In the bottom of the ninth, the Cubs are batting, and they're tied up with the Pirates at 5-5. Five to five. Let's see. Clemente and Sargill have homered for the Pirates. Santo, Williams, and Rudolph have hit home runs for the Cubs. L.A.'s in Atlanta tonight, San Diego at Cincinnati, San Francisco will be at Houston. Over in the American League, Boston beat Cleveland 4-3. The winner, Vicente Romer, Romo, the loser, was Burchard. California leading Minnesota 2-1 after five innings out on the West Coast. Well, we've got a new pitcher for St. Louis in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Ray Washburn. Washburn started out this year as a starting pitcher, but has been taken out of the rotation by manager Red Shandine. Nelson Bryles uh, worked a total of three innings. He gave up six runs on seven hits, struck out one batter, and walked two. The first pitch to Gary Sullivan is taken outside for a call strike one. Phillies beat the Mets 2 to nothing this afternoon. Still five all Chicago and Pittsburgh in the bottom in the ninth inning. Fly ball out the center field by Sullivan is taken by Kurt Flood. Chicago, left fielder, Mac, Mac John steps in. Mac walked in the first inning. Went to third on a double by Rusty Staub and scored on a sacrifice fly by Ron Fairley. Then he grounded out. Or rather, popped out the second baseman, Julian Javier. Next time up, that was in the second inning. This time he pops to just in foul ter- territory in front of the expo dugout, and he's out of there. Fouls out to Mike Shannon, the third baseman. Next man up for the expos will be Rusty Staub. Ray Washburn. Pitching for St. Louis. Washburn's record is two and seven. Has pitched in 83 and one third innings. Has an ERA earn run average of 3.04. Trumps delivers his first pitch to stop. Rusty takes it. It's high for ball one. Rusty had a double knocking in that first expo run in the first inning. He was hitting 292 going into this afternoon ball game. Has upped his runs batted in total to 25. Ball two on Rusty Staub. Rusty has clouded nine home runs. Hit one in last night's ball game here at Jerry Park. A back-to-back job with Ron Fairley. And in case you just joined us, Bob Bailey and Coco Boy came up with their Alphonse and Gaston routine again. Outside for ball three. Bailey hit one halfway up. Jonesville, a real tremendous clout with Ron Fairley aboard, and then Coco the Boy followed by lining a shot into the left center field seat this afternoon. We're not talking about Monday night. Call strike and stop, three and one. They did that Monday night, but they did it again this afternoon. Three and one the count on Rusty Staub. Washburn looks down at McCarver, gets a sign, Pumps delivers a three and one pitch. A fly ball into right field by Staub. Near the foul line, going back for it is Pinson, and he's got it. Rusty's out of there. Rusty got a lot of height to that uh, fly ball, perhaps a little bit too much. The Expos are out in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. We'll now go to the top half of the fifth inning with the Expos still in a 6-5 to five lead. With the Philadelphia Phillies coming in, 8.05 starting time tomorrow night, we'll get our first look at Steve Ranko, the 24-year-old right-hander acquired in the June 15th trade that sent Don Clendenin into the Mets. Ranko will make his first major league start for the Expos tomorrow night against the Phillies. Woody Fryman is the Phillies' probable starter against Ranko and the Expos. Then there'll be a single game Saturday afternoon and a doubleheader on Sunday 
with the Phillies. Phil Stoneman is the Expo's probable starter against the Phils on Saturday. Jerry Robertson and Mike Wagoner are slated to pitch the twin bill on Sunday. That doubleheader will get underway at 135 on Sunday afternoon. We would also like to mention again, next Wednesday, July 2nd, will be Alouette's night. Kay Dalton's Alouette's will be here to take on the Montreal Press, radio and TV. This game will start at 6.30, and it'll be uh, three innings or one hour. Whichever comes first, I have an idea. Russ, the hour is going to come first. <laughs> it might take an hour to play that first inning. Lou Brock, starting off for the Cardinals in the fifth inning. Brock had a hit, so he's extended that hitting streak to 11 games. First pitch to Brock is low and away, gets away from Ronnie Brand. One ball and no strike. Brock grounded out Bob Bailey to Howie Reed covering at the bag in the first inning, and he singled in the third and scored ahead of Joe Torrey, who belted a three-run homer. Next one is foul to the last of us. Into the seats. One ball and one strike. Outfield playing Brock straight away. Not terribly deep considering his power. And Brock hit a long one to that uh, power rally last night. Wings and a curveball and misses for strike two. Now Fairley just moves over a couple of steps to his left. Just slightly toward right center field. The one and two pitch swung on a miss. And Lou Brock missed that breaking pitch from Dan McGinn by a good foot. For Dan, that was his first strikeout. McGinn has given up only one hit. He has walked one batter since coming into the ball game in the third inning. The pitch to Torre is high and outside for ball one. Bob well, Torrey was a big troublemaker for Howie Reed. Sent him to the showers with that long blast to left field. Three run homer in the third inning. Big Joel hits this one on the ground now to Bobby Wine. Bobby scoops it up, fires to the first, and Torrey's out. Tim McCarver, the first man to face Dan McGinn in the third inning. Here's the next batter for St. Louis. Two out, top half of the fifth inning. Expos leading this ball game six to five. We've had four home runs in this game. One by St. Louis, Joe Torre, and three by the Expos. Pitcher Howie Reed homered. And so did Bob Bailey and Coco LaVoy. The pitch to Tim McCarver is low for ball one. When Dan McGinn's curveball is working well, his breaking pitch, it's tough on these left-hand batters. This is a fly ball out in the center field. Ron Fairley only has to make a few steps in front to pull it in. And the Cardinals are out in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning with the x balls still in the lead by the score of 6-5. to five. Let's get back to that American League scoreboard now. Boston beat Cleveland 4-3. to three. Red Sox, four runs, seven hits, two errors. Cleveland, three runs, six hits, no errors. Romo, the winner, Burchard, the loser. Romo's now three and four on the year. The Twins scored twice in the top of the six. And they now lead California... 3-2 to two with the Angels batting in the bottom of the six out at the Big A at Anaheim. Jim Cott on the mound for the Twins. Jim McLaughlin for California. Carmen Killebrew hit his 18th home run of the year for Minnesota. Came in the fourth inning. 3-2, Twins leading the Angels. Reggie Jackson's home run in the first inning, his 28th of the year, Stands up as the Oakland A's lead the Kansas City Royals at Oakland two to one. Oakland batting in the fourth tonight. Chicago at Seattle, New York at Detroit. For the X balls in the bottom of the fifth, we'll be looking at Ron Fairley, Bob Bailey, and Coco LaVoy. 
Barely knocked in the second expo run of the first inning with a long sacrifice fly. Well over 400 feet. I'd say to within 15 feet of that center field fence, which is 420 feet away. So it wouldn't be well over 400 feet, but it was right near the warning track. In dead away center field, scoring Mac Jones with the Expo's second run. Then Ron poked the double down the left field line in the third inning and scored ahead of Bob Bailey on Bailey's blast. Takes the first pitch high from Ray Washburn. The count is one and no. Phoenix Lowry coaching for the Expos at third. Bob Oldis at first base. The one and all pitch to Ferry is hit through the box. A fine stab there by second baseman Javier. He can't hold on to it though. And Ferry's on with a base hit. Ron gets his second hit of the afternoon. A single through the box. Washburn got a piece of it. First baseman. And uh, Javier made a great stab out of it behind the bag at second base. He couldn't hold on to it. I doubt very much if Julian Javier could have made a play at first base anyway. So Ron Fairley is two for two with a sacrifice fly. Single on a double. That brings up Bob Bailey. The pitch to Bailey is outside for ball one. Bob walked in the first inning and crashed a tremendous home run halfway up into Jonesville in the third inning with Ron Fairley aboard. The 1-0 pitch is taken for call strike one. Boy, Al Barlick, the veteran National League umpire behind the plate, doesn't keep you guessing in what the pitches are like some of these umpires. Signals it right away and he's got a foghorn voice. The 1-1 one one pitch Outside for ball two. Nelson Bryles, by the way, and giving up those three home runs, has taken over the home run leadership with the St. Louis Cardinals. He has pitched 11. He has thrown 11 home run pitches so far this year. The two and one pitch is taken for call strike two. Washburn coming in with his fastball. Washburn has given up four home runs. He has pitched. 83 and one-third innings. Was a starting pitcher with the cards, but was taken out of the starting rotation. Foul against the screen by Bailey. Bob sort of reached for a high outside pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Ron Fairley on first base. Nobody out in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Expos leading six to five. The pitch is into the dirt for ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Full count on Bob Bailey. Boy, Lou Brock and Kurt Flood are playing this fellow deep. Likewise, Veda Pinson, he's shaded over toward right center and deep in right center field. Everyone's deep for this Bob Bailey takes the next pitch. There goes the runner. Ball four. <laughs> Bailey draws his second walk of the afternoon. And of course, that's an invitation for Kogala Boy. Let's take 10 seconds for station identification. This is your exposed baseball radio network. Ray Washburn looks down at Tim McCarver. Gets his sign, watches his runners on first and second, delivers to LaBoy. Coco pops it up right in front of home plate, behind home plate now. McCarver's under it and takes it. Coco LaBoy fouls out to catcher Tim McCarver. The man at second base is Ron Fairley at first base, Bob Ready Bailey. Next batter, Ronnie Brand. Brand. Ronnie grounded out to second baseman Julian Javier in the first. Then got an infield hit in the third inning. Brand will be followed by Bobby Wine. Flood moves in quite a bit in center field. It's popped back of shortstop. Going back for this Maxwell. He's calling for it, and he'll take it. Two away. And Bobby Wine. Heads for the batter's box. 
Bobby's 0 for 2. He grounded out to first baseman Joe Torre in the second inning. Then grounded out pitcher to first in the third. Kurt Flood is moving over to true right field. He expects Bobby to hit it there, and he does. Down the line, foul. Oh, just by about a foot and a half, maybe two feet. Flood moved over in true right field on a right-hand batter. Expecting Wyatt to hit to the wrong field, and Bobby did. Wyatt likes to reach over and plunk those outside pitches out into right field. Next pitch is taken outside for ball one. Flood has moved over toward right center field. Six to five Expos, bottom half of the fifth inning, two out and two on. Washburn checks his man fairly at second, delivers to wine at third side for ball two. Expos have managed one hit off Ray Washburn. They get all their action off starter Nelson Bryle. Washburn delivers. Wine bounces on the ground out of Maxwell. He flips it over to second baseman Julian Javier for the fourth. And Wine is out of there, and so are the Expos, forcing Bob Bailey at second base. For the Expos, no runs on one hit. No errors. Two men left on. We go to the top of the sixth, with the Expos still leading by one run. Fans, the first of the two preseason football games to be played here at Jerry Park will be held on August 25th. And in that game, we'll have the Boston Patriots of the American Football League and the Detroit Lions of the National Football League. The second game on September 11th will feature two NFL teams, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New York Giants. Now, tickets for these two preseason games are now on sale at all CRS locations. You can also obtain a brochure showing the seating diagram of Jerry Park and the layout of the football field. Available now at all TRS locations. Wherever you buy Expos tickets, you can buy tickets to the preseason football games here at Jerry Park. Tickets are priced at $6, $4, and $3. First game, August 25th, the Lions and the Patriots. The second game, September 11th, the Steelers and the Giants at Jerry Park here in Montreal. The Pirates and the Cubs have gone to the bottom half of the 10th inning at Wrigley Field in Chicago, tied 5 all. And I know how manager Larry Shepard must feel in the bottom half of the 10th inning at Wrigley Field. With all that Cub power. My goodness, we've gone through a lot of that against the Chicago Cubs this year. Ninth inning and 10th inning rallies and 12th inning rallies. Boy, the Cubs are dangerous when you get into the bottom of the ninth and extra innings. Mike Shannon, first man up for St. Louis, swings and misses at the first pitch from Dan McGinn here in the top half of the sixth inning. Shannon hit into a fielder's choice in the second and walked in the third. Big Mike was batting, hitting 247, starting off this afternoon. 25 runs batted in and five home runs. The count's now one and one on Shannon. Fine afternoon crowd here at Jerry Park. A reminder again, the Phillies and the Expos open a four-game weekend series here at Jerry Park, tomorrow night, 8.05. Outside for ball two. Come on out to see some of that Expo power. See Bob Bailey and Rusty Staub and Ron Fairley and Coco Lavoy. And the mayor of Jonesville, Mac Jones, who's overdue to put one into the seat. On the ground, down a wind, can't get to it, out into left field for a base hit. Mike Shannon leads off the sixth inning with a single, just past shortstop out into left field. Julian Javier. Would you give me second baseman? Javier, single in the Javier. second inning, stole second base and then scored, along with Mike Shannon, on Dal Maxwell's single to right field. Then he grounded out third to first in the fourth inning. Javier 
hitting 269. 12 runs batted in and four home runs. McGinn looks down to Brand, gets the sign, delivers his first pitch. It's low and inside, but uh, Javier swings at it just the same and fouls it to the left. It rolls into the Expo dugout. Sort of an inside sinker from McGinn. It actually hit the dirt. Javier scooped at it just the same. Well, that's an important game for the Cubs. They can really move, pick up a full game on the Mets, who are beaten 2 to nothing by the Phillies this afternoon. Russ, right-hander Chuck Taylor warming up. If they get down in the Shandy's batting order, we'll probably see a pinch hitter. The 0-1 pitch. Again, to Javier's liking, but again he fouls it. Again, an inside, low inside pitch. 0-2. Again, steps off the the rubber, goes to the rosin bag. Now gives the new baseball a working over. He's way ahead now of Julian Javier. Gets a sign from Ronnie Brand, checks his man at first base, and delivers his 0-2 pitch. It's into the dirt for ball one. All three pitches to Javier have been low and inside. Remember that the Phillies Expos game Saturday is in an afternoon game, starting at 2.15, Invitation to all our friends up in Ottawa. Special promotion by radio station CKPM. Join in on the fun and come down and see the Expos in action. You can buy your tickets through any TRS location in the Ottawa area. Two Miracle March stores. Struck him out. Again, Javier went after that low inside pitch and struck out. For Dan McGinn... His second strikeout of the afternoon. The Colonial Bus Lines is the location, 265 Albert Street in Ottawa, the TRS location for Expo baseball tickets. Also for the two pro football games, August 25th and September 11th. 1-0 the count on Dal Maxwell. Also in Ottawa at the Miracle Mark stores, 2160 Carling Avenue in the Fairlawn Plaza and 1595 Maryville Road. To all you boy-towners, we hope to see you here Saturday afternoon at Jerry Park. Ground ball down to Sutherland. Up to wine for one. Back to first double play. A big double play by the Expos. For St. Louis, no runs on one hit. No errors. Nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the sixth with the Expos still leading six to five. Getting back to the scoreboard now. Still no further word on that Chicago game. Cubs batting in the bottom of the tenth. They're tied up five to five. Philadelphia beat New York two nothing. Grant Jackson the winner. Don Cardwell the loser. Tonight, Los Angeles is at Atlanta, San Diego at Cincinnati, and San Francisco at Houston. Over in the American League, Boston beat Cleveland 4-3 in an afternoon game. Romo the winner, Burchard the loser. In the bottom of the sixth, it's the Twins leading California 3-2. In the fifth inning at Oakland, the A's 2, the Royals of Kansas City 1. That's out at Oakland. New York playing at Tiger Stadium tonight in Detroit. Chicago's at Seattle later on tonight. And that winds up the baseball scoreboard. Russ will have the details on all of today's games and a look at tonight's schedule on the baseball scoreboard following this and every broadcast of Expos Baseball. Oh boy, Dave, that double play combination, Gary Sutherland, Bobby Wine, and Bob Bailey is really something to see us looking better every day. They're making the play quicker and more smoothly every day. A real treat to see them in action. If you haven't had a chance, get to Jerry Park this weekend and see the Phillies in the Expos. 
It's going to be a great series because the Phillies are in fifth place in the National League. And that's where the Expos are aiming for. Dan McGinn, the pitcher. Dan struck out in the third inning. Take the first one inside from Ray Washburn for ball one. McGinn took over from Howie Reed in the third inning when the cards got to Reed. And Danny has kept the door shut rather tight on St. Louis set. Two and all now the count on McGinn. Danny stepped out of the batter's box to check his sign with Phoenix Lowry. Gets it. Line shot left center field for a base hit. Dan McGinn. And he gets away from third spot. McGinn is going in a second. Here's the throw. And he's in safely. again line that shot out into left center field Kurt Flood went for it they have not announced the official scoring yet on the play it may be a hit and an error we'll wait for the official scoring and yet they might give Dan McGinn a double but Flood definitely single and an error to Kurt Flood single for McGinn an error by Flood Let's begin take second base. Conference on the hill. The man warming up for St. Louis. Left-hander Joe Horner. They haven't got Horner listed in the expo program, but it is Joe Horner warming up. Is it not, Dave? The batter is Gary Sutherland. Pitch to Sutton is popped into short right field. Going back for it is Javier. In for it is Pinson. Javier takes it. McGinn is going down to third. Here comes the throw. Throw to third. Safe. Dave. Danny McGinn held up, tagged the bag, and took third on the throw. Sutherland pops out to Javier. Pops out to Julian Javier, and Dan McGinn took off for third base, and he's in good scoring position now. Mac Jones. Well, Big Mac is... He can only hit a fly ball. And we might see McGinn come in. But now they're signaling for Joe Horner, the left-hander, to come in and pitch for St. Louis now against left-hand hitting Mac Jones. Mac hasn't had a hit this afternoon. He walked in the first inning, popped out the second in the fourth, or popped out the second in the second. And fouled out to third baseman Mike Shannon his last trip up in the fourth inning. Jones was hitting 281 going into this afternoon's ball game. Mack leads and runs batted in with 39 and in home runs with 11. Talking over with Rusty Staub in the on deck circle. Russ, guess who hit a home run for the Chicago Cubs in the bottom of the 10th to give them a 7 5 victory over the Pirates? I'll say Ernie Banks. Nope. Who spoiled our Sunday afternoon for us? No. Fellow by the name of Jim Hickman. No. Hickman hit a home run to win it for the Cubs in the bottom of the tent. Seven to five. The Cubs beat the Pirates. We'll have the line score in just a minute. Well, that Jim Hickman is not making himself too many friends outside of Chicago. Boy. Bottom half of the 10th inning. He came through, as Dave pointed out, most of you fans know, last Sunday afternoon. Joe Horner is now pitching for St. Louis. The attendance here is 8,748 this afternoon at Jerry Park. So Ray Washburn came into the ball game in the top half of the fourth inning. He pitched uh, 
three innings. So two and uh, one third innings. Gave up a total of two hits. The total attendance so far this year at Jerry Park is 427,264. So he pitches to Mac Jones. Washburn walked one batter and failed to post any strikeouts. The pitch to, oh, it hits him. Inside pitch from Joe Horner gets Mac Jones on the shoulder. No damage done, and Mac is on. Brings up Rusty Stop. Expos lead this ball game six to five in the bottom half of the sixth inning. One out, the runner on first is Mac Jones. Stop the batter to be followed by Ron Fairley. Joe Horner, a tough left-hander on the hill, delivers his first pitch to Rusty. Line shot right center field. Jones is rounding second, heads for third. Stop holds up at first with a single. That's what Rusty Staub thinks of tough left-handed pitchers. Ron Fairley, two for two, plus the sacrifice fly, scoring a run in the first. is charged uh, uh, there, uh, this run here wait a minute not even close they reach for the the net on a pop fly by Ron Fairley back of the screen but that was way off down in the seats a good all 40 feet in front of us Mac Jones is on third base Dan McGinn came in and his run belongs to Ray Washington. There's another hit out of the right field. Another run for the Expos. Dodd is heading to third base. Ron Fairley with his third hit of the afternoon. And that brings in Mac Jones. Jones belongs to pitcher Joe Horner. He put Mac on with a hit pitch. So the Expos have two runs here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. They lead this ball game eight to five. Bob Bailey fouls the first pitch to him, way out of play. Rusty stops. He is on third. Ron Fairley on first base. Max Jones and Dan McGinn have scored here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Honor delivers to Bailey. Way outside for ball one. Our rusty stop has... Two runs batted in in this afternoon's ball game. Big Rusty really producing. Way outside again for ball two. Two balls and one strike on Bob Bailey. Bailey really clobbered the ball for his fifth home run in the third inning. High into the seat behind the left center field fence. Two and one pitch. Foul down the right field line into the seats. The count is two and two, and Bob broke his bat. I hope that isn't his favorite bat. Ron Fairley 
is now hitting 377 since he joined the Expos. He's 20 for 53 trips to the plate. Boy, that deal looks good there. Bailey has a two and two count. Outfield playing him as deep as they possibly can. The pitch to Bob is inside. Gets that inside corner for a call third strike. That's Horner's first strikeout. Coco, the boy. Coco steps in. He had a home run in the third inning right after Bailey's fly. Coco fouled out to first baseman Joe Torrey in the first, and he fouled out to the catcher Tim McCarver in the fifth inning. Runner on first is Ron Fairley, and on third, Rusty Staub. Fairley brought in Mac Jones with his hit. Foul back against the screen. 0-2 the count. Straw brought in McGinn. And Fairley brought in Jones. Here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Expos leading this ball game by the score of 8-5. to five. The 0-2 pitch to Coco Leboy on the ground down a short. Maxwell throws the second for the force, and it's finally over for the Expos. But they picked up two runs on two hits. No errors by the Cards. Two men left on. After six complete innings of play, the Expos lead the Cards 8-5. to five. <laughs> All right, here's the line score now in that Pittsburgh-Chicago game. Chicago, seven runs, 11 hits, one error. The Pirates, five runs, 11 hits, and two errors. The winner, Phil Reagan. The loser, Bruce Del Catton. Reagan is now nine and five on the year, and it was Jim Hickman's home run in the 10th with one on that broke up a 5-5 ball game to win it for the Cubs, 7-5 over the Pirates. Phillies beat the Mets this afternoon, 2 to nothing. Jackson over Cardwell. They are the only other afternoon games in the National League today. Tonight, L.A. is at Atlanta. Padres play the Reds at Cincinnati. The Giants are in the Astrodome against Houston. In the American League, Boston beat Cleveland this afternoon, 4-3. Minnesota and California are now in the bottom of the seventh. And it's California, 4, Minnesota, 3. Bottom of the seventh, the Angels are batting. Kansas City and Oakland tied 2-2 as they go to the sixth. Here are the totals after six innings. St. Louis, five runs, seven hits, one error. Expos, eight runs on 11 hits and no errors. Now we go to the top half of the seventh inning. Phil Gagliano pinch hitting for the pitcher, Joe Horner. Gagliano, a right-hand hitter, looks at one low and inside, ball one. Gagliano batting 2-0-3. He'll be followed by Kurt Flood and Veda Pinson. Again with the windup. And he deals a strike. One ball, one strike to Gagliano. Cardinals did all their scoring in the second and third innings. Expos leading 8-5 here in the seventh. The pitch swung on and a bounder goes to the left. Wind up with a high hop. Throw to first base. That's all for the pinch hitter, Gagliano. One away. Kurt Blood is two for three. Single in the first. Was out in the third, bunting, and singled in the fourth. Kurt Flood. On the mound, Dan McGinn. The pitch to Flood. Low and inside, ball one. Flood, right-hand hitter. Houston, Texas, lives in East St. Louis, takes a strike, one ball, one strike. Oh, the Phillies winning again today. Expos want to hang on to this one, and then they're looking forward to this weekend series with the Phils. Pitches down low to flood. 
Two balls, one strike. And boy, those Cubs were rough on the Pirates. Winning again today. I think that's four that they took from Pittsburgh. Ron Fairley a few steps around in left center. Here's the pitch. Just missing the outside corner. Three and one to flood. Back Jones straight away in left. The boy about even with the bag, right on the edge of the grass. Third base. Bobby Wine playing in the hole. Gary Sutherland has moved around. He's almost behind second base. Back on the edge of the grass. Here's the pitch. Taken for a strike on the inside corner. A full count now to Kurt Flood. Three and two. Getaway game for the Cardinals. They go to Chicago. Here's the payoff pitch. Flood swings. Here's a bounder again to Wine. Bobby's got it. Sets himself. Throws in time to get Flood. Two away. Great offense. It'll be the batter. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Hit into a double play in the first inning. He walked in the third, and he was on when Joe Torre hit a three-run homer. Then he hit into a fielder's choice that ended the fourth inning. A three-run homer by Torre in the third brought the Cardinals from behind and put them out in front. 5-3. to three. Hard hit ball, ground. Sutherland has it. Throw to first. That's all. Cards are down. One, two, three in the seventh. Nothing across. The score at the end of six and a half. The Montreal Expos eight. The St. Louis Cardinals five. Fans, baseball is fun in a group. So why not stage a fun evening with your group? For your annual outing, plan a day at the ballpark. Your group from the block, from the office, from the club will receive the Expo's red carpet treatment, including preferred parking space for your chartered bus within just a few feet of the main gate. You know, a lot of folks are coming down from Ottawa this weekend for Ottawa Day. Well, wherever you may be along the Expo Baseball Network, whether in the province of Quebec, in Ontario, or down in the United States, why not in whatever town or city or village or hamlet you're located in, why not write to the Expo, form a group, and come up to Montreal to see Big League Baseball. The man to get in touch with is Mr. Roger Savard. He'll look after all the details for you. He'll make sure that your group will be seated together in a choice location in the ballpark and that your bus will get top-rated parking privileges. Well, we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. The Expos still in the lead by three runs. They lead eight to five. They got two runs in the first, one in the second, three in the third, and two in the sixth inning. A lot of Expo power. They have out-hit the Cardinals 11 to seven. They have cracked out three home runs, one by Bob Bailey, one by Coco Boy, and another by starting pitcher Howie Reed. Dave, you all set? Bottom third of the Expo's order, and I'm all set. Ron Brand, Bobby Wine, Dan McGinn. Ron Brand is one for three. Grounded out in the first. He got a hit in the third. Popped up to Maxville in the fifth. Taylor with the windup. Deals a strike. 0 and 1. Right hander. Taylor, no decisions. 2.70 ERA, his seventh relief appearance for the cards this year. Brand swings, fly ball down the right field line. Coming over fast, making the catch is Pinson. One away. Oh, Bobby Wine is grounded out twice, hit into a fielder's choice. Right hand hitter. Started today batting 224. Taylor is low and outside with his first pitch to wind. Ball one. Wind blowing out a little bit toward the right of straightaway center field. Taylor again, low and outside, ball two. Two and nothing. We'll give you a station break here in just a moment. We'll see what happens to Bobby. Here's the windup. The 2 nothing pitch. Swung on. Ball hit high into the air. Left center. Coming over fast. Brock and Flood. Flood has it. Center fielder. 
Let's take 10 seconds for station identification now on the Expos Baseball Radio Network. A division of Regal Broadcasting. This is WHRL 103.1 on your FM dial, Albany, New York. Dan McGinn, who came on in relief of this ball game, is third time up. He's one for two, got a hit and scored a run in the sixth. Looks for the strike. 0 and 1. Danny, a left hand hitter. Dave, Joe Horner worked two thirds of an inning, gave up one run, two hits, struck out one, and hit one batter. Pitched him again, has bounced foul behind the plate. Strike two, 0 and 2. of Dan McGinn with two outs and nobody on. Here's the windup and the pitch. A swing and a foul back to the left side. Count is still 0-2. Taylor is the fourth pitcher the Cardinals have used this afternoon. Bryles, the starter, was... Taken out after the third. Another foul back to our left, right into the press box. Ray Washburn worked two and a third innings. He was scored on. Horner worked two-thirds of an inning. He was scored on. First man he faced, Mac Jones, was hit by a pitch, and Mac scored on Ron Fairley's base hit. Dan McGinn goes down swinging. So Taylor gets a strikeout, and he put the side down, one, two, three, with nothing across. After seven innings, it's the Expos eight, the Cardinals five. Well, the Chicago Cubs will be coming to Montreal for a four-game series against the Montreal Expos starting on Monday, June the 30th. And, of course, July 1st is uh, a holiday here in Canada, and that will be a big uh, opportunity for a lot of Canadians to come to Montreal. They'll be vi visiting Saturday's uh, Man in His World down on the island and likely coming to Jerry Park to see the Expos in action against the Chicago Cubs. And when you look at the Chicago Cubs, you'll look at a team heavily favored to win the Eastern Division title of the National League, a team just loaded with all kinds of power. As we were telling you just a few moments ago, Jim Hickman uh, ruined Sunday afternoon for the Expos with that ninth inning blast with two out, bottom half of the ninth inning. This afternoon, the bottom half of the tenth inning, clouded the home run to win the ball game for the Cubs over the Pittsburgh Pirates. So we'll see all this Cub power starting Monday, a four-game series between the Expos and the Chicago Cubs here at Jerry Park. The home goal, the left fielder, Lou Brock. Lou Brock, Joe Torrey, and Tim McIver. Here's we go to the eighth. Brock, left-hand hitter. He's one for three. Got his hit back in the third. He was on when Torrey connected. But the Expos lead this one, 8-5. McGinn's wind up, the pitch. Swing and a foul tip at the plate. 0-1. The outfield is not too deep for Lou Brock. Mac Jones in left. Ron Fairley around toward right center. Staub in right. Right side of the infield back. Sutherland a step from the edge of the grass. Bob Bailey about three steps behind the bag, just off the line. Here's Danny's 0-1, way outside, stopped by Brand. One ball, one strike. Expos won the first game of this series. Bill Stoneman beat Dave Justee 4-1 night before last. Swinging foul into the stands to our left. One and two to Brock. Then, last night, Bob Gibson and Jim Grant won a couple of ball games. The Cards took a doubleheader, 8-1 and 8-3. And now this final game of the four-game series here this afternoon. 8-5, Expos in the eighth. The one-two to Brock. Struck him out with a curve. That's a beautiful pitch. Second time, McGinn has struck out Lou Brock. 
first baseman. That ball breaking away from that left-hand hitter as he went after it. Here's Joe Torrey now. Torrey's home run in the third chased the starter, Howie Reed, after two in the third innings. Torrey then grounded out against Dan McGinn in the fifth. So Joe is one for three. Takes a strike across the knees on the inside corner. 0-1. On deck is Tim McCarver. Danny winds it up. His pitch is swung on and grounded foul into the Expos dugout way down to our left. Nothing in two. Danny's ready. His pitch just missed the outside corner. Ron Brand thought he had a strike call. He fired that ball to third baseman Coco Laboy, but Torrey's still there. Two and two. The pitch. High and outside. Expos scored first in the game. Cards tied it in the second. Expos went out in front in the bottom of the second on Reeves' home run, 3-2. to two. Torrey swings, grounds one to LeBoy. Good stop behind third. Long throw. Bailey with a good stretch, but his foot came off the bag. And Torrey's been called safe. Bob had to reach to the right field side to take that throw, and there'll be an error charge to Coco LeBoy. Which is a shame because Coco made a fine stop of that ball that was hit hard, deep behind 30, had a long throw to make, and it pulled Bailey off the bag. So with one out, Torrey is on, and here's Tim McCarver. Infield a double play depth. McCarver is 0 for 2 with a walk. Coco a little bit upset, but he'll shake that off, make the play the next time. Pitch to McCarver, taken high, ball one. Eight thousand seven hundred forty-eight. The official paid attendance here this afternoon. Curve is fouled back, coming onto the netting. One ball, one strike. McCarver, left-hand hitter, goes right down on the end of that bat. Holds it high over his shoulder. Danny McGinn to the stretch. The pitch to McCarver, swung on right back to McGinn. He turns, goes to second for one, back to first. It is not in time to get McCarver at first. The ball not hit that hard, bounced to McGinn. Danny had to wait for it. So McCarver's on in the fielder's choice. Torrey is erased. McGinn to wine. Two away. The batter, Mike Shannon, one for two with a walk. Right hand hitter. And don't forget, tomorrow night we'll have our first look at the young 24 year old right hander, Steve Renko, who just reported to the club. He'll be starting against Woody Priman in the Phillies. Ground ball to Bobby Wine. He gobbles it up, throws to Sutherland to get the force on McCarver. And that's all for the Cardinals here in the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors. One error in the field by a throwing error by LaVoy. One man left on base. And the score at the end of seven and a half, the Expos eight, Cardinals five. Reviewing those out of town scores. This afternoon, Chicago defeated Pittsburgh seven to five. Jim Hickman hit a home run with one aboard in the third um, in third of the year in the bottom half of the tenth inning to give the Cubs that 7-5 victory over Pittsburgh, thus increasing their lead in the Eastern Division to six and a half games over the New York Mets, who were beaten two to nothing by the Philadelphia Phillies this afternoon. The winning pitcher was Bill Regan. The loser was Bruce Bell Canton in that uh, Pirate Cup game. In the Philadelphia-New York game, Jackson was the winner. Cardwell was charged with the loss. In the American League, Boston beat Cleveland 4-3. to 
Minnesota and California are at Anaheim. The Angels lead the Twins 4-3, to three, top half of the eighth inning. Oakland and Kansas City are tied, two all playing in the top half of the seventh inning. Other games will see Chicago at Seattle and New York at Detroit. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Here at Jerry Park in Montreal, the Expos still leading the St. Louis Cardinals 8-5. to five. First man up for Montreal will be second baseman Gary Sutherland, the leadoff man. Second baseman, Gary Sutherland. The top of the order. Sutherland, Jones, and Stop. Gary is one for four. He got his hit back in the first inning when the Expos scored two runs. Three Montreal home runs this afternoon. One by Howie Reed, the starting pitcher. Two-run homer by Bob Bailey in the third. A solo shot by LeBoy in the same inning. Gary swings. Ball hit high in the air. Left field. Coming in a couple of steps now. Taking it is Lou Brock. One down. Mac Jones is 0 for 2. He also walked and was hit by a pitch. Each time he got on base, he scored a run. Mac's been having a tough time against the Cardinals in this series. He's got one hit for the four games. Swings and misses. Strike one. One out and nobody on. Chuck Taylor delivers. Fastball inside. One ball, one strike. Outfield around to the left. They're deep for Mac. Staub is on deck. Pitch inside again. Ball two. Two and one. We'll be on the air with the pregame show tomorrow night, 7.45. Airtime here will be, or rather game time, will be 8.05. We hope you'll be here. Steve Renko in his debut. Mac fouls one. High out of play to the left. Two and two. And you'll be able to see all of the improvements that have been made here at Jerry Park. The ground's just beautiful now. All of the paving has been completed. There's uh, Lou Martin's flower garden out front when you come in. A 2-2 pitch. Little low. Ball three. Three and two. McCarver was ready to toss that ball to third base. And he and Al Barlick having a few words. Taylor's 3-2 pitch. Struck him out. Mack goes down swinging. Taylor puts some pretty good stuff on a fastball. The second strikeout for Taylor, and the batter will be Rusty Staub. Here with two outs, nobody on in the eighth. Well, Mack Jones just made a youngster happy there in the box seats behind the Expos dugout. The Expos bat boy reached for the bat, and Matt handed it right by him into a youngster in the box seats down there with his dad to see the ball game. Here's Rusty. Let's one go for a strike. Stop is two for four. Doubled in the first. Got a base hit in the sixth. He's driven in two runs this afternoon. Stop with two. Fairley with two. Bailey with two RBIs. LeBoy and Reed with RBIs also. The 0-1 to Rusty. Taken on the outside corner for a strike. 0 and 2. Rusty Staub is a hard man for pitchers to get out because, as we've said so many times, he has such a good eye, such terrific balance and concentration at the plate. An immense amount of concentration. The pitch, high and inside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. And it's not that Rusty won't strike out or won't be called out on strikes. But when he is, 99% of the time, it was just not his pitch. And Rusty's the batter that goes after his pitch. 
It's one hard down the left field line. This one going all the way into the corner down the left field line. It's a fair ball. Stout is up at second base. He'll hold up there with a stand-up double. Rusty's third hit of the day is second double. Cobb has now hit 12 doubles. He's moving in on the team leader, Coco LeBoy, who has 15. Now with Rusty at second, two outs, the batter will be Ron Fairley. That's the first hit off Taylor. 12 hits now for the Expos. They're leading 8-5 to five here in the bottom of the eighth. They're going to pass Fairley and take their chances with Bob Bailey. Fairley has gone 3-for-3 three three with a sacrifice today and has driven in two runs with a double and a couple of triples. He's hitting 377 since joining this ball club on our western road trip. Ball three to Ron. One more. There it is. He has been intentionally passed, and they'll pitch to Bob Bailey. Bob is one for two with a couple of walks. He hit a two-run homer in the third. Right-hand hitter, Bob Bailey. Staub at second. Barely at first. First pitch is a strike call, 0 and 1. Vic Davalio loosening up in the St. Louis bullpen. Davalio, however, is not just throwing, he's pitching. Here's the pitch. Low outside. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike to Bob Bailey. Been a fine ball game with a lot of action for the fans here this afternoon. The stretch by Taylor. The pitch to Bob. He swings on the 1-1. Hard hit ball. Shortstop Maxville dropped it, picks it up, and makes the play at second base. Maxville recovered in time to make a play on Ron Fairley sliding into second. Maxville to Javier. So that's it. No runs, one hit. No errors in the field. Two were left. And the score here, at the end of eight innings of play at Jerry Park, the Montreal Expos, eight. The St. Louis Cardinals, five. A quick look. A quick look at some of the final scores. Boston beat Cleveland, 4-3. That's the only final in the American League. Russell will have the details on the other games for you coming up on the scoreboard. In the National League, these finals, Philadelphia over New York, 2 to nothing, and Chicago over Pittsburgh, 7-5 to five in 10 innings. Now, the details on all these games being played this afternoon and a look at tonight's schedule will be coming up on the baseball scoreboard with Russ Taylor immediately following the broadcast of the Expos ball game. We hope that uh, you'll do that after all the ball games. Stay tuned. Stay with us for the scoreboard. And keep up to date on all the happenings in the major league. This ball game now gets ready to move into the ninth inning, and Dan McGinn is just three outs away from picking up his first victory since the 10th of May when he beat the Cincinnati Reds here at Jerry Park 7-6. Well, we go into the final chance for St. Louis. They trail in this ball game, eight to five. Expos out in front. First man up, Julian Javier. The first pitch to Javier is inside. Ball one. Defensive changes have been made. Ron Fairley has moved from center to first base, and Adolfo Phillips has taken over in center field. The 1-0 to Javier. Low and inside, ball two. Two and nothing. Javier is one for three today. Against Dan McGinn, he hit into a fielder's choice in the third, struck out in the sixth. Maxville on deck. Pitch to Javier. High and inside, ball three. Well, Danny's behind here, three and oh. 
Expos leading 8-5. to five. Wanting to hang on. Win this one this afternoon and gain a split with the Cards. McGinn fires a strike in there to Javier. Three and one now the count. Outfield not too deep and around a couple of steps to the left. Here's the windup and the three-one pitch. Strike two call. So Javier's got to be ready now. Three balls, two strikes. Again's last decision came on the 10th of May. Beat the Reds 7-6. Bounder goes to the left side. Wind up with it. Has trouble finding the handle and the throw to first base is late. Bobby bobbled that ball after scooping it up and just could not get the ball out of the glove to make a throw. There's an error on the shortstop, Bobby Wine. So the Cardinals have got a runner on here with nobody out in the top of the ninth and Dal Maxville, the batter. Javier, the runner at first. He stole second back in the second inning. The stretch by him again and the pitch. Low and inside, ball one to Maxville, right-hand hitter. On deck, Steve Hunt will be pinch hitting for Taylor. McGinn deals. This one a strike. Cross the knees. One ball, one strike to Maxville. Ron Willis warming up in the Cardinal bullpen. Outfield pretty much straight away for Maxville. The pitch is inside. Ball two, two and one. Dan McGinn came on in the third inning. Has been going strong since then. Has given up but two hits to the Cardinals. The pitch taken for a strike. Count evens at two and two to Maxville. Javier, the runner at first, taking his lead now. Danny gives him a look. The pitch to Maxville. Swinging foul over to the right. Out of play. Count is still two and two. Ronnie Brand gives the sign to McGinn. Now sets the target. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. He struck him out. Maxfield strikes out swing for Dan McGinn his fourth strikeout Steve Hunts will be the batter for Chuck Taylor Hunts will hit right against the left hander Dan McGinn Hunts is batting 116. First pitch is low and away. Ball one. Hunts can bat from either side of the plate. On deck, Kurt Flood. One out and one on. A strike to Hunts. One and one. Danny has really looked good. He's only walked one. That was the second man he faced back in the third inning. The left-hander to the stretch and the 1-1 pitch. Strike two call. One ball, two strikes. So he's out in front of Steve Hunt. Runner at first, Javier leads the pitch inside low. Almost got away from Ronnie Brand. Two balls, two strikes. Against St. Louis here at Jerry Park. The Expos are two and three. This one would put them at three and three. For the year against the Cardinals, the Expos are four and seven. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Just missed the inside corner to Hunt. Full count, three and two. Flood on deck. Expos leading 8-5 to five here at the top of the ninth. 
with one out and Javier the runner at first. Here's the pitch. It's low and inside. Ball four. Hunt is on. Second walk given up by McGinn. Javier moves down to second base. Kirk Flood will be the batter. So things are getting sticky here for Dan McGinn in the ninth. We're going to get activity down in the exposed bullpen. Roy Face. Right-hander, along with Dick Raddus, the right-hander. Vic Davalio is going to run for Steve Hunt. Here's a ground ball. It is through the hole out into left center, a base hit. Adolfo Phillips coming up with the ball. One run is going to score. Javier scores from second as Flood drives in a run. It moves Davalio around the third base with only one out, and that makes it an 8-6 to six ball game. So Flood comes up with his third hit of the day and an RBI. And Beta Pinson, who is 0-3 with a walk, will be the batter, left-hand hitter. Kurt Flood, the runner at first. Vic Davalio at third. Again, looking for the side. The stretch. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a bounder. Hard hit. Wine has it to Sutherland for one. Back to first. Double play ends the ball game. Vincent hits into the double play. And that's all for the Cardinals. They get a run on one hit. There was one error in the field. One man was left on base. The final score... The Expos 8, the Cardinals 6, will have the totals in one minute. Fans, remember the old days when you had to stand in long lineups to get tickets for sporting events, for baseball games, football games, and so on? Remember the days when you try to get through the box office on the telephone, and the phone would ring and ring, no answer, or worse still, you'd get that busy signal on the line. Well, no more of that through the TRS system, the computerized ticket system. This is a jet age way of selling tickets to sporting events. Through TRS, you can obtain tickets to any Expos baseball game for any game this season, and you can obtain tickets for any sporting event played here at Jerry Park in Montreal. Remember, there are two pro football games coming up. Through TRS, the ticket is punched out right on the spot the minute you lay your money down on the counter. That means that that seat is canceled elsewhere in all other TRS locations. You've got nothing to worry about. Your seat is reserved. So buy your tickets for Expo Ball Game through TRS. Well, the Montreal Expos have gained a split in their four-game series with the defending National League champion St. Louis Cardinals by defeating the Cards 8-6 to six using great power. Here with all the details once again, Dave Van Horn. Okay, Russ, here's the line score in the ball game. The Cardinals, six runs, eight hits, and one error. The Expos got eight runs, 12 hits, committed two errors. Eight to six, the Expos over the Cardinals. Montreal left nine runners on for the game. The Cards left five on. Eight, 12, and two for the Expos. Six, eight, and one for St. Louis. So the team split the series two games each. Eight home runs hit by... Montreal in the series, Bob Bailey hit three, LeBoy two, Fairley one, Staub one, and Howie Reed hit one. Today, Bob Bailey and Coco LeBoy hit back-to-back home runs in the third inning. Bailey's a two-run homer. Howie Reed hit a shot for the Expos in the second. Rusty Staub, Ron Fairley, Bob Bailey all had two RBIs today. LeBoy and Reed getting the other RBIs. In the lineup, Rusty went three for five. Ron Fairley went three for three with a sacrifice and a walk. For the Cardinals, Joe Torrey had a three-run homer. That was in the third inning. Flood went three for five at the plate. We'll have more on the wrap-up in just one minute. Fans of DRS locations near you are marked in an Expo booklet, which can be procured by writing to the Montreal Expo's office at 1010 St. Catherine Street West. 
Not only will this small brochure, which, by the way, will be sent to you absolutely free of charge, not only does it contain all the TRS locations throughout Ontario, the province of Quebec, and the northeastern United States, it not only lists those outlets, it also gives you a diagram of Jerry Park. In other words, you can check the diagram to see where your seats are located and then go and purchase your ticket. It's that easy through TRS. Remember that for the pro football games on August 25th and September 11th, you can purchase your tickets right now through TRS. Folks up in Ottawa know that there are TRS locations at the Colonial Bus Lines and at Team Miracle Mart, 2160 Carling Avenue and 1595 Maryville Road. The winning pitcher, Dan McGinn, is now 3-7 and seven on the year. Nelson Browns, the loser, is 6-6 six and six, as the Expos beat the Cards 8-6 to split the series here at Jerry Park. Let's take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Expos Baseball Radio Network. At 103.1 in your FM dial, this is WHRL in Albany, New York. It's 6.30. Losing pitcher Nelson Bryles in this ball game is now one and one against the St. Louis Cardinals, and Dan McGinn, who is the winning pitcher, is now two and zero. Oh. He beat St. Louis on the 14th of April, eight to seven. Gary Wasluski, who's now in an Expos uniform, was the losing pitcher in that ball game. That was in the opener here at Jerry Park. So McGinn, the winner, Bryles, the loser. The Expos over the Cardinals, 8-6. to six. Now stay tuned for the baseball scoreboard, beginning in just two minutes. On this, the Expos Baseball Radio Network. Well, the St. Louis Cardinals will go on to Chicago now to play the Cubs, and the Philadelphia Phillies will move in to Jerry Park for a night game tomorrow night, a single game on Saturday afternoon, and a big doubleheader on Sunday. Tomorrow night, Steve Renko. The 24-year-old right-hander acquired in the June 15th trade that sent Don Clendenin into the Mets will make his first major league start for the Expos. 8.05 starting time. Woody Fryman is the Phillies' probable starter against Renko and the Expos. Now, Bill Stoneman is the Expos' probable starter against the Phillies on Saturday, and that game will start at 2.15. The Sunday doubleheader will start at 1.35. Jerry Robertson and Mike Wagoner are slated to pitch the double-dip for manager Gene Mock and the Montreal Expos. So we hope to see you here this weekend. Be sure to get by the TRS ticket office nearest you and get your tickets to Expos Baseball and come on out this weekend. And don't forget the first of the week, Monday, the Cubs are in for four days. You know, sports fans, besides the Major League Baseball season, summer is moving right along also. And it's time to really start doing something about that lawn and garden. And also those rooms that need painting and the paneling job for the basement, they also need taking care of. And there's no better time than right now to do the chores you'll be way too busy to do when vacations come. And the finest place around for the materials you'll need for all your summer work is Davy Building Materials in Sand Lake, just off Route 43 on Rikers Lake Road. Now a complete line of true tempered garden tools and escrow fertilizer and grass seed is there for all your outdoor work. And for inside, it's Glidden paints and varnishes, Waltex wallpaper, and Abitibi paneling for that real professional look. So don't wait. Stop in soon and find what you'll need for your home and garden at a price that will really please. Now remember, too, that all you'll ever need in plumbing material is available at Davy Building Material. Rikert Lake Road, just off Route 43 in Sand Lake. Open from 8 a.m. until 9 p.m., seven days a week. Expos received great relief pitching from Dan McGinn, who pitched six and two-thirds innings, gave up only three hits, struck out four batters, and walked two. Dan seemed to tire or get into a bit of trouble in the ninth inning, but that uh, great double play com combination of Bobby Wine and Gary Sutherland pulled things out as the... St. Louis Cardinals had runners on first and third with one out, 
A final out with great fencing, bouncing out to Bobby Wine. Wine whipped it over to Suggs. Suggs made the relay to first baseman Ron Fairley to complete the double play, the third double play pulled off by the Expo infield this afternoon. A lot of home run power by the Expos. Starting pitcher Howie Reed hit one. Bob Bailey hit another. And so did Coppola Boy. Those were back-to-back home runs in the third inning. Well, that's the story on the Expo victory. The winning pitcher, Dan McGinney, 3-7. and seven. The loser, Nelson Bryles, he's 6-6. Six and six. In just one minute, I'll be back to review the rest of the action in the National League. Hi, this is Greg Morris of Mission Impossible with an important question for young men. Do you know where you're going? Have you considered the Coast Guard? The United States Coast Guard builds well-rounded men, experts in a variety of fields, men with eyes on the future. At the United States Coast Guard Academy, you'll receive the finest education and military training, a Bachelor of Science degree, and the commission in the United States Coast Guard. If you have the ability to take command, the Coast Guard is interested in you. At the Academy, you can concentrate on engineering, management, or oceanography. Your training and education will encompass every facet of the Coast Guard's humanitarian mission. If you have what it takes, take a career in the Coast Guard. For brochure and application form, write to the Director of Admission, Coast Guard Academy, New London, Connecticut. That's the Director of Admission, Coast Guard Academy, New London, Connecticut. The Chicago Clubs increased their lead over the second place New York Mets to six and a half games this afternoon by defeating the Pittsburgh Pirates in typical Cubs fashion, bottom half of the 10th inning, on a two-run homer by Jim Hickman, who ruined it for the Expos in the first game last Sunday afternoon. Final score, seven to five for the Cubs over the Pirates. The winning pitcher was Phil Regan. The loser was Bruce Del Canton. Home runs in that ball game by Billy Williams, and Ken Rudolph, along with Santo and Hickman for the Cubs. Clemente hit one for the Pirates. So did Willie Stargell and Manny Sanguillan. 7-5 to five for the Cubs over the Pirates. Earlier, the Philadelphia Phillies defeated the New York Mets 2 to nothing. Jackson the winner, Cardwell the loser. The Mets managed only four hits off the Philadelphia pitcher. Tonight in the National League, Los Angeles plays at Atlanta. San Diego will be at Cincinnati and San Francisco at Houston. Looking at the standings, the Cubs increased their lead to six and a half games. The Pirates in losing dropped ten and a half games behind the front-running Chicago Cubs. Atlanta is leading the Dodgers by half a game in the Western Division of the National League. That's the story in the National League. In 60 seconds, I'll be back to look at the American League. At Anaheim, California, the latest score we have from there, Minnesota leads California, 7-4, playing in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Harmon Killebrew hit his 18th home run of the year for the Twins, takes homeward for California. Caught pitching for Minnesota, McLaughlin started on the hill for the Angels. Minnesota is in a tie for first place, a virtual tie for first place, with the Oakland Athletics actually two percentage points behind the Athletics. The Athletics are in action right now out at Oakland. The latest score we have from there, 3-2 for Oakland over Kansas City, playing in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Reggie Jackson stocked his 28th home run of the year for Oakland with one aboard in the first inning to give the A's a 2-1 lead over the Kansas City Royals. 3-2, Oakland over Kansas City, playing in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Other games in the American League, Chicago plays at Seattle, and New York will be at Detroit. So that's the story in the American League. In 60 seconds, a final wrap-up on the Expos. Showing tremendous power at the plate. A total of 12 hits by the Expos, including home runs by Bob Bailey, Coco LeBoy, and starting pitcher Howie Reed. The winning pitcher was Dan McGinn, who is now 3-7 and seven on the year. Nelson Bryles was charged with the loss. He is 6-6. Six and six. So the Expos will open a four-game series with the Philadelphia Phillies, Tomorrow night, they'll play a single game Saturday afternoon at 2.15 and a doubleheader Sunday afternoon starting at 1.35. Then come Monday, we'll be looking at the fabulous Chicago Cubs leaders in the Eastern Division. That means the Cubs with Ernie Banks, Ron Santo, and company. And that's the story on the Expo game.